Hello friends! This is the beginning of a new series that I've been meaning to make for a long time now and it's something super important not just to art conservation but it's also important to have a basic understanding of it in archaeology as well. That is the agents of deterioration. The agents of deterioration are essentially the pillars of preventive conservation. They're the things that haunt you late at night and make you wonder if you forgot one of them and then you'll go into the storage room the next day and find a complete infestation of bats has suddenly taken up residence in your tapestry section or you know a flash flood has just waterlogged everything. Stuff of nightmares. These agents of deterioration are essentially what their title describes them to be. Factors that contribute to the deterioration of a cultural heritage object. The Canadian Conservation Institute has created the ultimate resource for these and it's freely available on their website but I wanted to make videos that summarized everything because well that's what I do. So here we go. There are 10 agents of deterioration, so there will be 10 videos for you guys. It's a lot of information, but someone's gotta do it. So the first agent we're going to be talking about is, ugh, man, with all this agent talk, I feel like I should be putting on like a trench coat or something. Boom, there we go. Now we're talking business. Agent Raven here, ready to protect some cultural heritage. The first agent we are going to be discussing is Physical forces. A physical force is something that physically happens directly to the object. So think handling, dropping, shipping, earthquakes, explosions, accidentally causing a fresh break on a piece of pottery with your pickaxe while excavating. Anything that physically can affect an object. Physical forces can cause damages like compression, tears, cracks, scratches, dents, and abrasions, everything kind of like that. Don't forget that our friend gravity is a physical force as well, and it also may have an effect on an object's well being. That, that was 90% gravity. Gravity is a constant force on everything, and supports that you use on an object may deform an object because the load of gravity may not be placed properly. There are five physical forces that we need to take into account. They are impact, shock, vibrations, pressure, and abrasion. Impact is the result of something striking an object. This could be an object striking a hard surface or two objects coming into contact with each other. And of course, there are different types of impact. You could have a concentrated hit that only causes localized damage like a crack or you could have a more spread out impact that affects an object in a larger way. Don't forget that localized impacts like those small cracks can increase an object's susceptibility to force in the future. Shock is the result of a strong impact which can produce a lot of strain or even deform an object. Shock can cause tons of damage and it's the most important thing to consider when transporting an object because it's the top cause of damage in that situation. Shock is the energetic response of an object. Low levels of shock may be absorbed and spread throughout the object without damage because it dissipates but then of course impact may cause movement in the object and it could collide with other parts of itself or with other objects. Higher shock levels can cause the object to move and induce a lot of strain that is higher than its normal thresholds. Shock effects can accumulate over time, but if the shock is high enough, damage will occur in one single event. If you don't prepare for shock, you'll be in your own shock after you damage an object. It's not fun, fam. Tears are involved, followed by a very strange urge to pack up and move to Venezuela. Vibration is the oscillating motion of an object in relation to a fixed point of reference. With vibration, the most important thing to consider is the actual type of vibration. Many objects with, you know, extending pieces or moving pieces pieces, free hanging pieces, things like that can be very prone to vibration. The main things to be concerned about with vibration are its frequency and its amplitude. You want to know how often the vibration waves are happening and how strong they are. Obviously, if the vibration is low and infrequent, it's not very worrisome. Whereas if it's random vibration, like with most everyday things and with transport trucks, you would need to be more concerned and aware of the risk to your object. Vibration can come from a lot of things like transportation, construction vibration, and sound vibration. Vibration can have a lot of different effects on an object. Objects that are just sitting on a shelf can move, hit each other, fall off the shelf completely. It's the whole nightmare type thing. If an object has loose fitting pieces, vibration can also shake them off. Objects that are in a box and aren't properly cushioned will also hit each other and rattle around if there's any sort of movement to that box. Some
some objects, of course, are more sensitive to vibration than others. A large, heavy statue will, of course, be less susceptible to vibration in comparison to an antique clock with all of those fine-tuned moving parts. Pressure is pretty self-explanatory. It's the force applied to an object. This can be anything from gravity to the pressure your hands place on an object while handling it. A good rule of thumb to minimize pressure is to expand the contact area, which will then spread the pressure outwards. This means that there will be a lower amount of pressure over a wider area instead of a high amount of pressure in one small area. So it's a really good distribution of that pressure to make sure the whole object can sort of handle it. Abrasion is of course when two surfaces move against Against each other. It's just like scraping your knee on the ground after you trip on a European cobblestone during your run and you eat dirt in front of everyone, but no one comes to help you because they're practicing social distancing. Abrasion risk depends on the pressure between the two surfaces and the strength of the surfaces. Again, different objects will have different susceptibility to abrasion. Thicker glazed pottery has a lower chance of abrading in comparison to, for example, to unfired clay or pastel paintings. So that is how an object can get damaged through physical forces. But how can we protect them from this agent of deterioration? Well, the best things are to practice proper safe handling procedures and making sure that you're holding objects with two hands, that you're never carrying it, but rather that you're putting it on a padded rolling cart to move it from place to place. It's also important to make sure that your shelves and cabinets are stable and that the objects on them are separated and well padded and also far away from the edge. Objects that are in boxes should have their own little nesting place so that that way they're well protected and that other objects won't touch it either. Plus they just look beautiful. There's something so oddly satisfying about a box that's perfectly formatted to an object. It's like placing that last piece of a puzzle. When you're transporting an object, make sure that it is well padded in a box with lots of foam and that no other objects are loose. Also make sure that the boxes themselves are restrained in the back so they don't move around either. If an object has a delicate surface, you'll probably also want to protect that from the packing material as well. Essentially what you want to do is restrict the movement as much as possible while still making sure that you don't restrict it so much that it can cause unwanted pressure on the object. It's like helicopter parenting, don't do it. Have enough precautions in place, but make sure you're not putting too much pressure under them that they would crack. Just use your common sense and always think of the consequences for every action that you do with an object. You want to make a plan for everything you do and always have the object's safety at the center of it. Of course, there are physical forces that you can't really escape. Earthquakes are things that we can protect against, but never completely. Museums in places that have a high risk of seismic activity are of course always built with that protection in mind. For example, I was in the Acropolis Museum last summer in Athens when an earthquake hit, and I was amazed how sturdy everything was. It was a small earthquake, but if they didn't plan in advance, a lot of stuff would have fallen over and been damaged. So there you have it guys, the first agent of deterioration. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next agent of deterioration. I'm gonna go hunt him down right now. Big thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you like the channel and you want to support it, go on over and become a patron for some really, really cool behind the scenes looks and you get some free things as well. You might even get your name on the screen right here. Here are all of my socials and as always, stay dirty my friends.